to rejoice in it. You know, the world today, or the United States, shall I say, is celebrating also the Super Bowl. But this, this is our playing field. This is our Super Bowl. This is our hour Amen. to say to our master, thanks for letting us be champions. We are champions. Yes. So we have come today to say thank you. And the deacon ministry would like to ask you to lift up your voices with us as we come to you today with our devotion. I love to hear, I love to sing his word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. Let me hear you sing it. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Sing it loud. Sing it loud. Oh, how I love Jesus. Yeah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Yes. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. come out of the book of 2nd Chronicles 20, 13 through 19. If you're able, please stand for the word of God. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Haziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Metaniah, a Levite of the son of Ahaz. Came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you. Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but, the, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeril. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Korhites and the children of the Korhites stood up and praised the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. May God add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his holy word. I need the old. I need the thing. Now, 
of kings, the Lord of lords. Say your prayer. You sit on high and you look low. Yes, sir. Talk to him. To the heavens declare your glory and the earth your handiwork. Yes, sir. Talk to him. Lord, we are pleased and grateful for your blessing. Thank you. Lift up our heads and direct our path. Yes, sir. That we may know where to go. Yes, sir. Lord, you are awesome. Yes, sir. And deserving of our praise. Yes, sir. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, today is like no other day. Yes, sir. For Talk you have him. opened Talk our eyes and woke us up this morning. Talk to him. Talk to him. You have given us activity of our limbs and you allowed us to come into the house of worship one more time. Talk to him. Talk to him. Lord, we are just thankful. Thankful to just kneel before you, to stand before you, to walk before you in your ways. You said that if we walk and follow your commandments, that you will bring us into your kingdom. Yes, sir. And that you will know that we love you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To be obedient children in your house. Yes, sir. Lord, you sent your Holy Spirit to dwell within us that we may have the power to overcome the darkness. Talk to him, talk to him. Let the light shine even in the midst of a dark world. Yes, sir. Though this world may not recognize the light when it came, but we recognize our Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Talk to him, talk to him. Who was lifted up on the cross and who was stretched wide. Yes, sir. Lord, Thank you for thank you. paying a price that we couldn't pay for thank ourselves. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for that grace. Thank you. And that mercy. Thank you. That you decide to leave a kingdom to come down here to save a wretch like me. Thank you. I just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. And as we continue to learn of you. We come together as a people. We come together because we know that there is nothing greater than you. Yes. There is Super Bowls. There are all kind of things that the world are coming together to lift their hands up to, but we're lifting our hands up to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For a Super Bowl can't save me. But your love and grace can. Yes, sir. But all of these things you have provided. Yes, sir. Every meal, every breath. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For you own all the cattle on a hundred hills. Yes, sir. You've laid the foundation of this world, and you've laid the foundation in our hearts. Yes, sir. And we continue to ask you to walk with us and to keep us safe. Please, sir. Please, sir. We ask all of this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.
I woke up this morning with my mind set on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind set on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind set on Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know. Hallelujah, singing that prayer with my mind, set on Jesus, singing that prayer with my mind, set on Jesus, singing that prayer with my mind, set on Jesus, hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah, you know, hallelujah, it ain't, ain't no, no harm to keep your mind, set on Jesus, it ain't, ain't no, no harm to keep your mind, stay on Jesus. Ain't no harm in with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I woke up this morning with my mind. With my mind. Stay on Jesus. I woke up this morning. Super Bowl Sunday, but you know, um, all days are super if you're alive and able to praise the Lord, amen? Yeah. So yeah, let's, let's celebrate the Lord today and have a good time in his, in his name, amen? amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Now, the song they just got through saying was, I woke up this morning. What was your mind on? I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. You know, the first thing you ought to say when you woke up this morning was, thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Lord, that you blessed me to see another Sunday. Thank you, Lord, that you gave me use of my arms, my hands, my legs, and my feet, that I could come out here and worship you another Sunday. Yeah, this may be Super Bowl Sunday, but with God, every day is Super Bowl. You know, the first song they said was, I need thee. How often? Is it every hour or every second, every moment, every time? I need him all the time, 24-7, as the kids say, 365 days out of the year. I can't live without him. See, I don't know about you, but I know what he's done in my life. Oh, he picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet. Y'all don't hear me. Let me call the roll. Has God been good to anybody? Has God blessed anybody? Oh, you may not live in a house on a hill. You may not be eating filet mignon. But if you live in a one-bedroom apartment 
If you eat rice and beans, you still have something to be thankful for. I just want to know, has God blessed anybody? If you can go, you've been blessed. If you can bat your eyes, you've been blessed. If you can clap your hands, you've been blessed. If you can shout hallelujah, oh, they say God is good. All the time and all the time, there's not a moment that I don't know when God ain't good. Yeah, I know it's not proper English, but you get where I'm coming from. See, we ought to work up this morning, just like the song says, with our minds stayed on Jesus. It wasn't our alarm clock that woke us up. It wasn't maybe even the rooster crowing that woke you up. It was only the grace of God that your bed was not your cooling board. So when you woke up this morning, the first thing you should have said was, thank you, Lord, because I didn't have to see it. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody who's just raised your hand? Is there anybody here that's standing in need of prayer? You got something that you have only talked to God about. Well, let me tell you something. We're going to do our call to worship. And I always say this. The Bible tells us to cast all our cares on who? On who? On him for he what? He cares for you. Now, if you cast all your cares on him, then you ought to leave it with him. That means when you pray, don't take it back with you. Don't think about it all through the day. You left it with him. So that means you let him handle it in his own time, in his own time, and in his own way. See, a lot of times our problem is we get impatient. We think God is our butler and our maid, and we can order him around any time we get ready. But see, God knows how to handle it. He knows when to handle it. And he knows exactly what to do. So when you pray, leave it there and just wait for the result. I just want you to raise your hand if you stand in the need of a prayer. You've gone to God and you're waiting for the answer. Amen. I see your hands. Let's go to God in prayer. Oh, God, our Father. Our Father. As a matter of fact, we cry, Abba, Father. We call you daddy because we had that personal and intimate relationship with you. Lord, we come to you as humbly as we know how. With no shape, form, or fashion, we just come as your children. Lord, the first thing we want to say is for waking us up to the dawning of another day. Thank you for giving use of our arms, our hands, our legs, and our feet. Thank you for allowing us to come out here to true love, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in our lives, through our lives, and for our lives. And we know that it's because of you that we live, we move, and we have our being. We know it's you that's working in us both to will and to do for your good pleasure. So we come, Father, just to say thank you for another Sunday. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've blessed us with. Oh, no, we may not have all that we ask and all that we desire, but we know you said that you would supply our every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You said that if we delight ourselves in you, that you would give us the desires of our heart. You said that if we look to the hills where our help comes from, because we know that our help comes from you, Father, we just come to say thank you. You've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. You continue to bless us in spite of our hard-heartedness, in spite of our stubbornness, in spite of our rebelliousness, in spite of our refusal to do what you tell us. You still bless us. Lord, if you gave us all of these temporary things down here on earth, like a job and like food on our table, clothes on our back, a roof over our head, if you gave us that, these little things, we want to say thank you for the greatest gift you could have ever given us, and that's the gift of your precious son. 
the Lord Jesus Christ, who was willing to leave his home in glory, come down to this sin-sick world and die on the cross for our sins. Right now, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. We pray that you would strengthen us where we're weak. Forgive us for the wrong thoughts we thought. Forgive us for the wrong words we said. Forgive us for the wrong deeds we've done. Continue to strengthen us by your precious Holy Spirit. Let us do nothing that would grieve or vex your spirit, but let us take our little will, put it in your will, that your will would be done in our lives, that as we go through our day, we can let our lights so shine before men, that they would see our good works, and you, and you alone would be glorified. Lord, we even lift up our elected officials, all of our politicians, but especially the Republican Party, those that are still doing evil and dastardly things, those that are still being contentious, those that are still doing things that are trying to get back in control. But you see what they're doing. Father, we know that you sit on high and you look down low. And Lord, we pray that they do your will, and if they won't, you can replace them. Lord, we're praying for a spiritual explosion. We're praying that all the hearts of the people would be turned back to you, that they would humble themselves and pray, seek your face and turn from their evil and wicked ways so that you would hear from heaven and forgive us of our sin. Lord, we're praying for a pandemic of love to overcome this systemic racism, bigotry, hatred, and prejudice. Lord, we're praying that we can have more love in our hearts for one another, that we can learn how to get along with one another, that we can learn how to esteem one another, appreciate one another, respect one another, and live in this world together. Lord, we're praying for your will and your will alone to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Satan, we give you notice right now, you are a defeated foe. We plead the blood of Jesus against you. We command you to take your hands off of our family members. Take your hands off of our finances. Take your hands off of every blessing coming our way. We command you in the name of Jesus to get behind us. We claim the victory right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you all praise, all honor, all glory belongs to you. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray and offer this prayer. And all in agreement, say together, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Who came to bless the name of the Lord today? Oh, come on, clap those hands. Hallelujah.
Jesus cast your cares upon him. He loves you. Hey. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, lay your burdens down. This is the time of worship. This is the time of praise.
transition two years of transition we've seen people that we've been knowing for such a long time people that have been here here today gone today here today and gone today but the Lord saw fit to keep you here 
And if that's not enough reason for you to get on your feet, if that's not enough reason for you to Shabbat the name of the Lord, then I don't know what it is. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be lifted up, the everlasting doors, and the King of glory, the King of glory, the King of glory, the King of glory. Hey, hey, hey. This is your moment of worship. This is your moment of praise. This is your opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you for the food on my table. Thank you for the clothes on my back. We love you. We love you. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, Shabbat the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, don't stop. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. My, my sisters, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Before we, before we move forward with our normal order of business during worship, I would ask that we would... Amen, there we go. Soft, a little something soft here. At this time... Um, this past week, uh, as a matter of fact, on Friday, we had the homegoing celebration for Mother Rebecca Wilson. And uh, at this time, before we move any further with our worship service, we want to have an opportunity for our mother, for Mother Jordan, uh, at this time to drape Mother Rebecca Wilson's seat. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mother Rebecca Wilson is the founding first lady of this ministry. And we give God all praise, glory, and honor for her life, her contributions, her love for this ministry. Amen. Amen. There were many persons this past week, of course, and uh, since her transition, of course, we're greatly sad. And yes, we miss her. And yes, uh, that is the emotion to have at that time. But think about it. Ninety nine years. Ninety nine years. And what a blessing it was for her to one day hear the vision emanated from the lips of Reverend I.W. Wilson, a vision for True Love Missionary Baptist Church, and for her to be able to see it come to the, the stance and to the position that this church is today, what a blessing from God. And with it, my sisters and brothers, I pray, I pray, I don't know how long I'm going to have to live, but or how long God's going to give me, but however long, I pray that each and every one of us, you don't know how long you have. But did we would all pray, as the psalmist said, teach us to number our days unto wisdom. Amen and amen. 
At this time, we want to uh, we want to recognize our first time guests. We want to greet our guests today. If you're visiting with us, if you're here today, if you're our guest for the very first time at True Love, would you please rise to your feet at this time? Come on, let's give God some praise for all of our first time guests. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. Of course, because of the coronavirus and because of uh, all the COVID restrictions, uh, we are practicing social distancing. We're not passing a mic around. But our greeting ministry team is coming around to present you with a token of our affection. We know that there are many churches in, throughout this valley that you could have visited with today. But we're so grateful to God that you listened to the Holy Spirit and you were led to 1941 North 8th Street. We are so grateful to God to have you worshiping with us. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Willie Jacobs, Jr., and his lovely wife, Sister Minnie Jacobs, we welcome you to True Love Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. If you are a member of another local assembly, please take our greetings back to your pastor and please let him know we did our best to treat you well today. Amen. But if by chance you don't have a home church, we pray that your search is over and that you would consider becoming a part of our church body. Amen. Again, you are welcome. Let's give God praise for them. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. And for those of you that may be our first time guests online, would you please just type in the comment section who you are, where you're from as well, and just let us know. And every now and then, when the service is going forward and the preacher stands to preach, put a clap emoji there, some praying hands, just let us know that you are part of this experience. Our greeting and, minist and, uh, greeting and ushers ministry is passed through the aisles right now, and they're sharing gifts for all of the ladies. This is a Valentine's Day tribute. Amen. So we give God praise for our greeting, our greeters, and our ushers ministry team. Amen. It's just a little token of our affection. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Please just, ra just lift your hand in the air if you did not receive one yet so that they can see you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, my sisters and brothers, we are about to go into another form of worship, amen, and that is our tithes and offerings. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Amen. In the book of Genesis, in the 22nd chapter, when Abraham was told by God to go and offer up his son Isaac, upon a mountain, a place where God would show him. The Bible says that God told him to sacrifice his son as a burnt offering. When we place, and then Abraham saw the place afar of off, he told his two men, stay here with the donkey, and me and the lad are going to go yonder, and we're going to worship and return unto you. One of the things that I want you to pick out and point out and stick in your heart is that Abraham understood that worship requires sacrifice. And I know that this may be more of a sacrifice for others than it is for, for men. Uh, but uh, in the Bible, in Luke chapter 21, Jesus saw a woman, who an old widow, who put two mites in the offering plate. And he recognized, and she's gone down in history in biblical writ because she gave more than those who had more. She gave all that she had. What you give is between you and the Lord, but recognize that worship requires sacrifice. 
and this is a part of your act of worship. Our ushers are going to pass through the aisles. If you did not get an offering envelope, please uh, just lift your hand in there that they might see you and give you an offering envelope. We don't want you, we don't want this moment to pass you by. Amen. Amen. Our ushers are coming. Just slip your hand in the air if you did not get an offering envelope. Praise the Lord. Amen. grateful for our ushers. Amen. All right, sisters and brothers, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this opportunity to give. Lord, there's no way that we can beat you when it comes to giving. Lord God, you've given the very best that you had. The, the Bible says, for God to love the world that he gave his begotten son. God, you are always giving. And we thank you, Lord God, that you've only asked for a portion of what you've given to us from us. God, there's no reason for us to sit back, be stingy about what we're giving. Because, Lord God, we wouldn't have anything to give had you not given it first. All of the tithe belongs to you. All that we have, all that we are is because of you. And so now, Lord God, out of obedience and out of love, out of the spirit of a cheerful giver, we give back to your portion of what you've given to us. Now we pray that you will take these gifts, multiply them, and sanctify them unto thy good purpose. May the gifts of a few bless many, for Jesus Christ has blessed us all. And together we say amen. amen. And amen. My sisters and brothers, after this next hymn, the next voice you will hear will be that of our preacher today. We praise God for the person of Minister Troy Walker. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Encouragement, encouragement. Hallelujah. We're so grateful to our pastor emeritus, Reverend Dr. Willie Jacobs, Jr., for his selflessness in sharing the mic with his associate ministers. And so today, Minister Walker is going to come, and he's going to bless our souls today. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul wrote these words, and we pray these words over you, Minister Walker. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Preach, Minister Walker. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let us worship the Lord. We declare today that the Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Whom shall we be afraid of? Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. The Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whoa. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear?
First, give an honor to God, who's the head of my life, who's my shelter, my protector, my provider. Praise him. Praise him. You never know when you might not have another opportunity. I know God has done something for me. I know he's done something for you too. If he, if he woke you up this morning, you should be shouting hallelujah. If he's kept you safe from dangers seen and unseen, you better shout hallelujah. Oh, bless him. Worthy is his name. Worthy is his name. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody wished they had the opportunity to praise him. Oh, bless his name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. an honor to the shepherd of this house, our pastor, Dr. Willie Jacobs, Jr., and his lovely wife, Sister Minnie. And for all of you that have assembled here, physically and virtually, may God bless you and may God keep you. Father God, I come to you right now just thanking you for this moment, oh God. Thank you for another chance to get it right. Thanking you for another chance to bring your word, oh God. I ask that you just hide me behind the cross, oh God. Use me in a mighty way, oh God, and allow your word not to return void. Right now, somebody is waiting for this word, oh God. And I ask that you send it and allow it to do everything it is that you would have it to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
So let us turn to Second Chronicles, the twentieth chapter, and we'll be starting at the ter- the thirteenth verse. And let us read it together. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their children, stood before the Lord. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benani, the son of Jael, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerul. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with voices loud and high. I'm going to speak from the theme, play your position. Play your position. In football, there is this concept called field position. This concept of field position refers to the placement and spot of the ball on the field on the football field where the offense will gain possession of the ball. To break this down, imagine a football field and it's my team versus your team. And my team is offense and yours is defense. Whatever yard my team has the ball on, when we switch and y'all become offense, y'all would get the ball at the yard where we left off. Some of my football scholars, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. When a team is said to have good field position, it means that they have a favorable position on the field in order to score a field goal or touchdown. So picture this. If my team is at your 20-yard line, we have a good field position because we only need 20 yards to score. Where your team would need to get the ball and drive it all the way down in the opposite direction in order to score. Let's unpack this. So if your team has good field position, this means that the other team will have to work harder to score on you. Let me say it another way. Positioning makes the enemy have to work harder to get an advantage on you. I don't think y'all hear me. Positioning makes the enemy go after you with everything they've got in order to overtake you. See, when you're in the right position, Attacks come stronger and harder because you're in the place that God has put you in. See, when you're in the right position, the enemy comes with all their might to knock you off your square. But where are all my people that can say, I can't be knocked down or overtaken because I'm in the position God put me in and I'm rooted and grounded in him. I can't be shaken, I can't be pushed, and I can't be moved. In our text, we find that the people of Judah and Jerusalem are in a dangerous position. 
the armies that have come against them have declared war on King Jehoshaphat. Now, when the messengers brought King Jehoshaphat this news, he begged the Lord for guidance and ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. Now, y'all, full disclosure, I got an issue with this. I'm saved, but I still got some work to do. <laughs> now, the issue with this text that concerns me is, why do we wait till we get in a bind and then pray to God? Why do we wait until we're at the end of our rope in order to pray to God? Why do we wait until we've tried everything else and all has failed before we seek God? I guess I'm just talking about myself this morning. Where are all my people that can say, I know I put God last, but he still showed up and showed out, providing me with more grace and mercy than I could ever deserve. So the people from Judah came to Jerusalem with their spouses and their children and their families to seek the Lord's help. Now King Jehoshaphat stood before the king, before the people of Judah and Jerusalem and prayed to the Lord. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men and he told the people what saith the Lord. Now, this is what the people of God should be doing. We need to rally together in prayer and fasting and seek the Lord regarding the things of God. And when I say the things of God, I'm not just talking about church activities. I'm not just talking about souls being saved, but I'm talking about the everything. Psalm 24 teaches us that the earth is the fullness of the Lord. So everything on it and in this earth requires us to pray fast and seek the Lord. That means our schools, our elected officials, our jobs, our state, our country, this entire world. When our kids are getting killed, we need to be praying, fasting, and seeking the Lord. When our black men are being chased down and gunned down, we need to be praying, fasting, and seeking the Lord. When our children are being raised by single mothers, we need to be praying, fasting, and seeking the Lord. Matthew 18, 19 declares that if two of us agree on earth concerning anything we ask, it will be done for us by the Father in heaven. Let us pause and think about this real quick. If two of us touch and agree and our petitions are done for us, Imagine the outcome if we all came together, fast, prayed, and sought the Lord. But here in our text, we have a people that are facing peril. They came together, sought the Lord, and the Lord listened and answered their prayers. Y'all mind if I break this thing down? Picture this. I got to go with me now. So we all living in different areas. Some of us living in Henderson. Some of us living in Summerlin. Some of us living in Perump. But we all tied to this church and this community, right? All of us may be dealing with our own different types of problems. I may be working 60 hours a week trying to make ends meet. You may be dealing with trying to find child care and maintaining a job in the midst of COVID. We all got our own thing going, but we are united because of this church and this community. Imagine if we were like the people of Judah and Jerusalem and came together and sought the Lord. Imagine what he, what he could do, not only for this church and this community, but for us individually and collectively. I know there's at least a few folks up in here who believe in the power of prayer. I don't know about you, but I know prayer works. I know it's kept my mama, I know it's kept my daddy, and I know it's kept my grandmother. Without prayer, I don't know where I'd be right now. When we look at this text, there's three things for us to take note of. The first one is, trust teaches tenacity. 
when we look at the people of Judah and Jerusalem, we find that they have tenacity. They have persistence. They are determined to find a resolution to their problem. They know they don't have the answer. They know they can't do it alone. They know they need help. I know there's somebody up in here that's been waiting on your answer. You've tried man, you've tried your own ability, you've tried everything that this world can offer. They say when, when all else fails, try Jesus. But I say always try Jesus. He's the comforter, he's our way maker, he's our provider, he's our shelter, he's our friend when you're lonely. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He's the bomb in Gilead. Is it all right if I preach this morning? Well, church, I got a message for y'all. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall he shall direct your paths. But you know what? There's a question I had to ask myself. How do you trust God when everything is falling apart? How do you trust in God when all hope is lost? How do you trust in God when you're sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore? Well, after I did some self-reflection and thought about me, I had to remember you going to worship. We find that as soon as the king, or as soon as the Lord gave the people of Judah and Jerusalem the answer, King Jehoshaphat fell down on his face in worship. See, the powerful thing about worship is it reminds us of who God really is. Numbers 23 and 19 records, God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should repent. Oftentimes, we come out of situations and storms and forget what God has done for us. How he has brought us a mighty long way, keeping us safe from danger seen and unseen. How he's delivered us from sin and washed us in his precious blood. How he's brought us out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set our feet upon the rock and established our steps. When King Jehoshaphat bowed his head, this act declared his faith and obedience to the word of God and gave thanks for the deliverance that God had promised. Now, I want y'all to think about something. I have fear. Y'all got fear. We all got fear. But don't let that fear make you doubt God. Don't give in to the fear that would drive you from him. You may have been down in the valley, but you know God is about to raise you up and set you on the mountain. Start telling your problems and situations about the God you serve, how God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. The next time fear creeps in and tries to take control, the next time doubt crawls in and tries to take control, look at yourself in the mirror and say, the work shall be done to your hands and you will not need to strike a stroke, nor shall you be the instrument, but only the spectators of the defeat of the enemy. Remember church, God takes up our cause and fights our battles in our favor. He gives us the victory, not because it's our cause, not because of it's our strength in which we are in battle, but because many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of all of them. Growing up, I always thought it took a lot to have faith. I always thought faith was like rolling a boulder up a hill. But the great thing about God is, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, 
and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. So in order to have faith, you must trust in what you hope for, that it will be. In other words, you got to see it before you see it. You got to see it before you see it. Or you'll never see it. Now catch this. If you don't have faith, if you don't have trust in God, then this means we are not pleasing in God's eyes because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I got a question for y'all today. Who are y'all pleasing? Bible scholars suggest let the Christian soldier go out against his spiritual enemies and the God of peace will make him more than a conqueror. Our trials will prove our gain. The advantage will be all our own, but the whole glory must be given to God. In all dangers, we should seek, we should always seek help from, uh, from God. From the beginning to the end of us seeking the Lord, we must approach him with the humility for our sins, trusting only in his mercy and his power. See, trust is the foundation of, of the Christian relationship. If we don't have trust, then we can't say that we love our neighbor. We can't say we don't believe in God because we know God, he, he transcends and supersedes everything that we could ever think. The second thing that we have to take note of is praise precedes prosperity. So we see in the text that before Judah and Jerusalem went anywhere or did anything, the Levites from the clans of the Kohathites and the Korahites praised God. This word praise in this context means to be boastful, to make a fool of to act madly. The Levites sung with such a joyful acclaim as they showed that they universally regarded the victory as already obtained. They believed that they had the full assurance of victory. The name Judah means praise. Back in the 29th chapter of Genesis, in the 35th verse, we find that Leah named her baby boy Judah because she was declaring, now I will praise the Lord. Fast forward to this text, when we look at the people of Judah, they were not just praising God, but they were living out their ancestors' declaration. Praising God in the storm has to be one of the hardest things to do, yet it's one of the greatest gifts God has given to us. Audrey, A motivational speaker recalls a difficulty in praising during the storm. August 8th, 2006, Audrey had gotten a call that her mom was sent home on hospice and that Audrey and all five of her siblings needed to get there because it wouldn't be much longer before her mom was gone. Audrey's mom was diagnosed with cancer 10 months prior and in the midst of all the treatment, all the chemo, all the stuff that was being spoken to her, her, the mom asked Audrey to stand with her in faith that our Savior, Jesus Christ, would heal her. And she would be a testimony of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. So Audrey did. She stood with her mom in prayer, in faith, in word, in spirit, and in the soul. She stood with her on God's word and his promises. But the thing is, Audrey felt like it didn't work. As Audrey arrived at the house the next day, she walked in to see her mother being helped off the toilet by her sister and brother-in-law. Her her mom was too weak to even stand up by herself. So as her mom was standing up, she heard her say, Oh, Lord, thank you for being so good to me. 
I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. But Audrey told her mom, really? You're dying of cancer and can't even go to the bathroom yourself. And still, you praising him? For what? He hasn't healed you. Four days later, Audrey's mom took her last breath here on earth. And with a huge smile on her face and her first breath in paradise, surrounded by all of her children. So Audrey fell into a horrible depression, turned her back on God. It was such a dark and depressing time with no hope in sight but God. He reached through the darkness that brought her out of that miry clay. Through the first five years of her mother being gone, she kept on hearing her mom say those words over and over again. Oh, Lord, thank you for being so good to me. She then prayed that in the midst of the storms of her life, no matter what they were, that she would be able to praise God in them and through them and be a testimony to those around her, just like her mom was. When we praise God, we are letting go of the need to see first and then submit. We don't wait until we feel like giving thanks. We do it out of obedience. We stop fighting the circumstances and acknowledge God's participating presence. Praise is an action. Because when you give thanks, you are involving God, inviting him into the circumstance and getting out of the way. When you enter his presence with praise, he enters your circumstances with power. We're all my people that say, I don't care what, it, I, don't care what I look like praising him, but I'm going to praise him. We're all my people that insist on praising God because you know he's going to bring you out. You may not see the victory ahead. But you're going to praise them because you know that there's got to be something better on the other side. See, I don't know about y'all, but I don't mind boasting in the Lord because I know where he's brought me from and where he's bringing me to. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor. I'm about to show the haters, perpetrators, and the imitators how good God is. The third thing we have to take note of is positioning provides perspective. In our text, verse 17 records, you will not need to fight this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. When we think about perspective, there are some things we must consider. Perspective is the state of existing in space before the eye. This means what your physical eye sees and then the second part is perspective is also the state of one's ideas and the facts known to one. So let me break this down. If you look at a distant mountain from one view, you see one thing. But if you move closer or you move further back, you see something else. Your perspective doesn't change the facts, but it changes your reaction to the facts. God wants to position us to provide perspective, allowing us to look beyond our natural eye and for his spirit to speak to our spirit and reveal the things of God to us. Think about this. Do you see the glass as half full or half empty? Is your perspective driven by what you had lost or maybe you see the glass as half empty because of something you expected but never received? Is your perspective driven by what you might have? Do you define yourself based on future ex expectations? See, if we're not careful, our perspectives could end up being driven by what we've experienced, but not necessarily by what is true. But a God perspective works differently. A God perspective doesn't look at 
what you might be. It doesn't look at what you might have lost, but it looks at directly what you have. Perspective means to look through or beyond in Latin. This means that while our human perspective looks at what the situation looks like, God looks beyond our faults and he sees our needs. Many Christians are living in the victory of the cross, but not in the triumph of it. Look at this. After World War II, there was a victory, but many people were still living with the devastation. They didn't shift their perspective to experience the triumph. What are you experiencing? Are you living in devastation or triumph? Are you living in desolation or joy? Are you living in despair or delight? I know there's someone here that's been waiting on their situation to change. I know you've been waiting for what feels like forever, but I'm reminded of all the people God has brought out of it. If he did it for Joseph, <laughs> I know he can do it for you. If he did it for Daniel, I know he can do it for you. If he did it for David, I sure enough know he can do it for you. I'm reminded of a story. Sister Sarah was a faithful member of her church for over 40 years. Sister Sarah began battling with her health, her finances, her ministry, and started questioning her existence. She had been diagnosed with cancer three times, hospitalized for COVID twice, and she suffered a stroke but she kept on hanging on. Sister Sarah went to her doctor for her monthly Friday morning doctor's appointment and ended up being hospitalized for her blood pressure. When she arrived at the hospital, she coded and fell into a coma. The doctors called her family and told them to get, the, get to the hospital immediately. Her family showed up and asked what's wrong. The doctors told Sister Sarah's family, we don't know. Her body seems to be shutting down. We've done all that we can. The family stayed by Sister Sarah's bedside all night. The next morning, the doctors came in and took Sister Sarah's vitals. The family asked the doctors, well, doc? The doctors responded and said, there's no change. Y'all should just give up. As the doctors left the hospital room, the family stayed there all day Saturday and all night Saturday. But early Sunday morning, the doctors came back in the hospital room and asked the family, have y'all thought about what y'all want to do? Before the family could even respond, Sister Sarah opened her eyes and responded. And she said, we're going to praise the Lord. The family said, we thought you were about to leave us and be with the Lord. And Sister Sarah told her family, while I was asleep, I was with my Lord. He's the one that sent me back. I had given up and thrown in a towel. But God threw it back at me and said, I created you for such a time as this. Your power is not in your ability to fight battles. Your power is in your ability to trust me and praise your way into the position that I put you in. For when you can praise me, no matter what the obstacle, mm, when you can praise me, no matter what the test, when you can praise me, no matter the outcome, you will be able to be a testimony to his people. I came to tell you, you may not be like Sister Sarah, but you may be tired and worn out from pain and suffering. But oh, there's nothing like praising God into his position, into the position he has for you. He can heal you like no other. He can rock you like no other. He can deliver you out of obstacles and circumstances 
without us having to do anything but just play your position. It is his will that you go through it and it not go through you. It was his will that allowed you to be tested so you can come out more than a conqueror. It was his will to allow you to experience that so you know that you're going to experience something greater. It was his will for you to understand that if you've never had a problem, you wouldn't know he can solve them. It is his will that you know he is your source and your supply. Listen, if God be for against you, if God be for you, who could be against you? You may feel weak, you may feel weary, you may feel worn, but where's all my people that know you can go to God in prayer? Where's all my people that can declare, I'm stepping into God's position for my breakthrough. I'm stepping into God's position for my miracle. I'm stepping into God's position for my comeback. You know, there's one reason you can make this declaration. On Friday, Jesus died on a hill called Calvary. Y'all know the story. He died for me and for you. One Friday, he died on an old rugged cross. They placed him in a borrowed tomb. He laid there all Saturday, all Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. And when he got up, my peace got up. When he got up, my love got up. When he got up, my joy got up. My healing got up. My provider got up. My protector got up. My shelter got up. He had to play his position. He had to declare, it is finished. He had to declare, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. See, when you play your position, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. When you play your position, there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. When you play your position, you can cast your cares on him because he loves you. And when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Trust in him. Because without God, we ain't nothing. We are just a dirty rag, but he cleans us up. He sets us on the right path. He gives us the activities of our limbs. Mm. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, Mm. You may have been out of the will of God, and it's time to come back home. The songwriter says, the safest place to be is in the will of God. We're going to extend the invitation. See, we have to, we have to change our perspective if we want to get to heaven. Because God wants to create a new heart. He doesn't want us to continue staying in sin. He doesn't want us to suffer. But we know that if we trust in God, if we believe in God, if we have faith that he can do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think, then we know God got us. All we have to do is play our position. All we have to do is follow his word. 
All we have to do is just invite them into our lives. Spend some time with them. All we have to do is give God the glory. Worship him in spirit and in truth. This may be one of y'all today. Y'all been out of the right position for too long. And you need to get back in the right position. Because everything has been going wrong. But once you get back in the right position with God, you don't have to worry no more. There will be some struggles, but you can trust and depend that God will deliver you. You can trust and depend that God will keep you. Life ain't perfect, but with God it's worth living. So if this is you, come on. Lord, I worship you. If this is you, God is waiting on you. This may be your last opportunity. Because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you the glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. You don't have to be perfect to come to God. Because of who you just got to be present. I will live my voice and say, Lord, you take the first step, and God will do the rest. Because of who you are, Lord, I worship you. Because. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. Oh, my provider. Jehovah Nisi. God. Praise God. Let's give him a minute to church. Hand clap of praise. Come on, church. We can do better than that. Come on. That was a powerful message. Play your position. 
Glory to God. I want to thank you, young man, not only for the words, but the deliverance. You know, there was some teaching going on. There was a little preaching in there. there was, you know what I mean? This is what the word, this is how the church get edified. Sunday morning. Praise God. Let's give God a hand clap. Praise him. Come on, church. I truly hope you were blessed by that message. Hmm. Play your position. Not mine. Not do you. Play your position. Praise God. Praise God. We have some special announcements today that I'm going to bring to you real quickly. Um, this one is, um, we're seeking true love members who are interested in the position of church secretary and youth clerk. Youth must be a middle, age, a middle or high school student. Both positions will be paid. Let me repeat that part. Both positions will be paid. If interested, please see Sister Ina Winslow. Ina, raise your hand. There she is right there. You see that lady right there. You know, with, is that a radio, Giorgio? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, if interested, please, Sister Ina Winslow, Lewis, today for additional information. Second announcement is Nevada State Bank is hosting a statewide virtual fair Wednesday, February 23rd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. For more information, log on to careers at nsbanks.com. If there are any young folks out here without a job, banking is a good job. It's reliable because as long as we're around, the banks is going to be open. Why? Because we give them our money. So you always have job security. So it's really something to enter, and it gives you a career, not just a job. You have the opportunity to have a career. So if you get a chance and you're heading that direction, take a look at this. Our third one is Silver State School Credit Union is now accepting applications for a $2,000 scholarship annually. For details, log on to silverstatecu.com. Hey, anytime you get some free money for education, but I want y'all to know, knowledge ain't free. You, you know what I mean? You go pay, you drive and try to go to Harvard and see how much it's going to cost you. So when you get that opportunity to get some help with your education, take advantage of it. Take a moment, sit off MTV, get into your thing. So you can get these scholarships to help your parents and yourself to see you through your education. Education is the key to life. Truly it is. We have one more. The executive board meeting will be Tuesday, February 22nd at 7 a.m. I mean 7 p.m. Once again, the executive board meeting, Tuesday, February 22nd at 7 p.m. And last but not least, Sister Minnie team, Minister Team coordinate event for Sister Minnie for Mother Minnie Jacobs needs all ladies to stay at the church for a short meeting today. So if you're part of the staff or the committee that's setting this thing up, a celebration up for Mother Minnie, which she deserves a hundred times over, hang around at the church for a minute so they can get coordinated. We have a, um, a letter that was passed to me, a card for True Love family. And it's, it reads, the kindness of others is a genuine reflection of the kindness of God. Thank you. This is from True Love Family. There are not enough words to fully express my heartfelt gratitude for all the prayers, love, and support you have shown to me during the times of my loss. I will always be grateful. I love you all, Sister Sherry Turner. Thank you, Sister Turner. This is our thought for the week. Let me, let, me, let me plant a seed. Let me plant a seed and let life come along and water it. Thought for the week is never let anyone, any person, or any force dampen, dim, or diminish your light. Praise God. Uh, by John Lewis. Thank you again for coming, for logging on, and for dialing in today. Have a blessed week. Stay tuned in as our virtual general church announcement will follow immediately after service. Sister Stephanie has a couple of paperwork she want to hand out. We thank you for your patience and we love each and every one of you. God bless.
We have some certificates of membership to be presented. When I call your name, would you please come up? Brother Claude Johnson. Brother Claude is blind, and he still completed his class. And we have Demetrius Johnson. And those members that joined last Sunday, please see me after church, okay? Thank you. Johnson and Johnson, amen? Thank you. His eyes may be dim, uh, blind, but he see with his heart. What a blessing. He comes and he enjoyed the word and he uh, just rejoiced that God has given him a soul that can uh, worship and praise God and be filled with the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. God is just something else. Amen. We thank God for who he is. Amen. I think uh, he said, I think, uh, uh, let's give Brother uh, uh, Minister Walker out here. Uh, I think he, I'm going to correct him on something he said. He said, God brought him a mighty long ways wrong. God brought you all the way. Amen. Amen. You can't do nothing without what? And I, He'll remember that. Amen. It's, it's just good to be here. Glad for all of you. Uh, uh, Brother Free over there. Amen. He was here uh, to the celebration of Sister Wilson. He's heading back to uh, the Big D, Dallas. Amen. And uh, we wish you a uh, uh, great blessing and a safe return. And say hello to the family. Amen. Next time you. You come, it was uh, kind of quick because Pastor, Pastor and Sister Wilson let me know and we'll hear a word from heaven. He can preach, amen. We thank God for him. Amen. amen. Okay, there's Sister. Are you saying hi or you want to say something? Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes and I'm going to start counting. Pull your coattail. Give it, give it the, give it the mic. Uh. I heard Dr. Hip Hill ask Reverend Free if he would do the closing prayer. So I know this is not a normal thing. This is normal for us to wake up, for the Lord to wake us up. This is the weekend that we just let uh, Mother Wilson set send her off with a beautiful send off. That's the kind of life she lived. He is here from Texas. Reverend F Dr. Hip Hill asked him to pray. And he said, sure, I will. So can you really let him pray? Okay. Amen. 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 Thank you, baby. Thank, thank you, Sister, uh, Sister Jordan. Sister Reverend Wilson used to call her Sister Jordan. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Yeah, someone said, if you can't get along with, with Jake, you can't get along with the Lord. Amen. I don't know if that was true or not. I'm pretty easy to get along with. Come on, come on up there. We, we thank God for all of you. And, um, hey, we, we're just grateful for for your coming and your present and, and, and we, we don't take it for granted. We realize that hey, uh, God sent you here for a purpose and Brother Walker, uh, Minister Walker, uh, he had a great and a mighty word. I, I usually 
usually the preachers, I usually give them a couple of weeks because I don't want them up here dragging and reaching and grabbing. You ain't got nothing to say. You know, hey, you, you, you got plenty of time to, uh, uh, to do it. Amen? Amen. So we don't, we don't, I don't really uh, tell the preacher surprising that, that Sunday morning you're going to preach. That's not good. Give him some time to preach. Amen. Amen. And that makes sense. Amen. And he ought to be able to come up here and what? Preach. Isn't that right? Because he. Amen. We thank God for you. Okay. Uh, now you're in the hands of uh, a great person. I mean, he. Now, uh, one thing about I can say about Reverend Free, he don't cut corners. Uh, you either, you know, he. He don't wholesale it out. He just tells you just the way it is. And uh, one thing I like, he's, he's, he's like God. Um, uh, if you like it, it's okay. If you don't like it, it's still okay. <laughs> Amen. 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 It, it's like uh, that Starbucks coffee. I don't drink coffee, you know. But it's like that, man. Well, those words might be a little bit strong. I don't. <laughs> I'm pursuing God's holiness. I'm trying to reach Him, but I'm a long ways off, just like most of us. Minister Walker, Minister Willie, that was a great word. That was a great word. I really liked trust teaches tenacity. I really like that. I really, really like that. Because that's the foundation that helps us to be content and walk in the Lord. If you, can't, if you, if you, if you haven't found contentment, if you haven't found that joy of your life, you, trust is the key to it. Follow trust. Let's all stand. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm full. I, I, I thank the Lord that he has brought me here to be able to share in this, in this, um, this opportunity, this time. I, I, Lord allowed me to come here and, and celebrate the home going of, um, of uh, Sister Wilson, and it was really such a joy uh, to, to have had the opportunity to be here and be a part of that and to be here this Sunday and be a part of the celebration. Nobody told me it was a kid day Sunday, though. Nobody told me it was an African wear. Um, I would have dressed up and done my thing, but um, I, I, I just really appreciate it, and I don't want to take up a lot of time, but let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you once again for this awesome day. We thank you for your opportunity to be in your presence, to know you, to love you, to praise you, and allow you to work in our lives. Father, we trust you. We want to stay in our lane, play our position. Help us to hear those words and put them into application in every facet of the life that we live. Because we live it all to your glory. It all belongs to you. You are in full control of everything that happens. Thank you for fighting all the battles for us. Thank you for telling us to be still and know that I am God. Father, we love you and we praise you. I thank you for the anointing upon this young minister that you would keep on anointing him in a mighty way. Keep allowing him to go deep into your treasure, into your library, so that he'll be able to give and give abundantly to those that have an itching and want to hear and learn your word. Father, I thank you for true love. It's a place that we've loved, a place that I've shared, a place that I've lived. I thank you for my brother, Pastor Jake. Father, I just ask the special anointing upon him as you continue to minister to him, minister to Sister uh, Minnie. I thank you for uh, Dr. Hempstead and all the blessings that you have in store for him. Father, we just thank you that you're so good. You're the only one that counts in everything that we do, everything that we say. Now to God be the glory in all, and let everyone say, amen.
location. In-person worshipers, there are offering boxes to deposit your gifts in as you leave worship today. You can also give on our website, www.truelovembclv.com. And don't forget to click the Give tab. Way number three is through the Givelify app. Search for True Love Missionary Baptist Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. And our last and fourth way is you can mail your contribution to True Love Missionary Baptist Church located at 1941 North 8th Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106. Stay informed of all of the happenings with True Love by visiting our website, www.truelovembclv.com and by following us on Facebook, YouTube, the band app, and text alerts. But just for a recap, join us every Sunday for Sunday morning worship, all masked up. Check-in and screening starts at 10.15 a.m. Deacon's devotional service starts at 10.45 a.m. And in-person virtual worship service begins at 11 a.m. Also, you can meet us virtually during the week. Sundays at 9 a.m., new members class. You can call in to the conference line by dialing 848-777-1500 and use the ID 648-3603-POUND. And our teachers are Reverend Dwight Grant Sr. and Deacon David Burney. Join us Sundays at 9 a.m. for Adult Sunday School, Mondays at 6.30 p.m. for Mission Study, and Wednesdays at 1 p.m. for Wednesday Bible Study, all taught by Deacon Rodney McKeever. And you can join in by calling the conference line at 347-817-2220 and by using the PIN 777-1509. Lit for Christ Youth Bible Study every Monday from 7 to 8 p.m. You can also text Lit for Christ using the number 4 to 55469. The instructors are Reverend Angela Riley, Sister Cherie Smith, and Sister Nikayla Brown. Join us every Tuesday for Tuesday Morning Glory. Tuesdays at 10 a.m. You can join us by calling the conference line at 848-777-1500 and use the conference ID 648-3603-POUND. Please be on the call three to five minutes early. Thursday night teaching, a.k.a. TNT, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Join us via Zoom by using the meeting ID 883-333-87283 and the pass code 1941. And if you're dialing in, you can call 669-900-9128 if you're in California or 346-248-7799, which is the Texas number. One life-changing hour, Friday Night Live. Prayer, praise, and some good 